Hello everyone, the NASA here with Action VFX. In today's tutorial, we will be learning how to create a lightsaber effects in Foundry's Nuke. We will cover one way to do a lightsaber effects using the Roto node, as well as compositing the sparks and the glow using our Action VFX spark hits and icon lens flare collection. And of course, special thanks to our friend Christopher Clements from Fiction and Post for lending us the plate assets from his amazing short film Star Wars Scene 38 Reimagined, which if you haven't seen it, go check it out in the description below. Also, we have our summer sale happening right now on our website, where we have 50% off on our entire VFX library. More info about that also in the description below. And now, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Nuke. Here we have our original green screen plate of Darth Vader fighting Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then on the side here, we have this node tree of the plate that have been keyed out and composited on top of a background. Now, we are not going to deal with the keying or compositing of this plate to the background. We're just going to work on the lightsaber effects in this tutorial. In order to do a lightsaber effects, it is ideal for you to have the actual blade of the sword when you are shooting. That way, we can just trace this lightsaber prop using tool like Roto Node to create a mat that we can later add glow effects on. So, because we need to see the blade in the shot, we are going to do our lightsaber effects in this original green screen footage. And once we are done doing the lightsaber, we're going to move the effects to this script where we have the plate keyed out and composited. So, I want to do Darth Vader's lightsaber first. And to do that, we want to create a tracker node, and we want to track each end of the lightsaber blade. So, let's create a tracker point, and let's track the edge of the hilt here. And then we want to track this forward. And then we want to track this backwards slowly. And when our tracker goes off somewhere, we just want to manually track it back into the hill. Next, let's add another tracker. We want to track the tip of the blade. Here we see that the tip is cropped by the frame of our shot here. And that is fine. We can just continue tracking by putting our tracker on the edge of the frame following the lightsaber blade. Great, next we're gonna set the reference frame for this tracker. I'm going to set it to frame 90 here. And then turn on the scale rotation and translate boxes and export this as match move. Next, let's create a roto node and then merge it into the plate. And then on the roto node, we're going to change the output to RGBA and then we're going to click here and select an open spline. And then we're going to draw a straight line using just two points. And boom, we have this thick white line. To control the thickness of this spline, we can go to the shape tab and increase the thickness until we cover the lightsaber blade. Of course, we currently cannot see how much of our spline covers the blade. So let's go to the merge here and reduce the mix for now so we can see a little bit of what's going on. You can also change the thickness of each individual points by just playing around with the green handle. Now let's plug in our match move that we made earlier. And now we have our spline already following the saber pretty well. So what we're going to do now is to just scrub through the timeline and make sure the spline is always covering the lightsaber. One of the problem that you may face with your lightsaber prop is it bends. So what we don't want to do is to add a point to follow the curvature of the prop. What we want is to always maintain the straightness of the lightsaber. So here, let's look at where the handle is pointing at. And then we want the tip of the lightsaber to follow the direction of that handle. Don't worry about the prop not being covered because we will just mask those out later. Also during the motion blur, we want to put our saber in the middle of the blur and increase the thickness of the tip. Now, of course, the problem is that we have a rounded edge instead of a flat smear blur like in the plate. That is fine. What we will do later is to chip the rounded tip using another roto shape. Okay, so here I have my lightsaber. Now let's get a merge and put in just before the match move. And then we want to set it to stencil. And then let's create another roto node and let's create a roto shape on the edge of the hilt to remove parts of the spline that is going over the handle of the lightsaber. And then let's fix the motion blur here. So here let's create another shape to shave off the rounded tip of the motion blur like I mentioned. 
Okay, so now let's turn up the mix on the merge and this is what we have. Okay, so everything is looking great except we want to mask out this part where we have the saber passing behind our talent, passing behind Obi-Wan here. So we want to roto Obi-Wan's hoodie to make our lightsaber looks like it's behind it. So I already have this road node that I made earlier of the hoodie area. So now what we're going to do is to just add another merge stencil below the match move and plug in our roto. And this is what we have. And now we finally want to add the glow effects. So let's get glow and we want to set the tint to red. And then let's increase the size a little bit, but not too much. Basically, we want to create a thin inner glow on our lightsaber. And then we want to copy paste the glow and then on the bottom one, we want to increase the size really big and reduce the brightness. This sets as the outer glow of the lightsaber. So now if we look at our saber that has been merged into the plate, we can see that when the lightsaber is behind our talent here, we have this inner red outline that serves as a light wrap. So what I want to do next is to repeat the same process that we just did to add another lightsaber for Obi-Wan. Okay, so here I already have the lightsaber for both of our characters. And as I mentioned, for the blue saber, it is the same process. I track the edges of the blade and then add the spline, add some roto work like before, and then add a blue glow. And then I merge the blue saber to our original red lightsaber together on a plus merge and then have them merged into the plate. Okay, so now we have our lightsaber. Let's switch out our green screen plate with the keyed out plate nodes that we have earlier. And here you can see that in this updated keyed out plate, we have shaved off the lightsaber. So we don't have to deal with the bendy tips. So now if we replace our green screen plate with these three nodes, this is what we have. Next, we're gonna add some spark effects. So I'm going to use spark kit number three here. And we want to add Kronos node to speed up our footage. So let's set the input range of the Kronos the same as our spark. And then we want to speed it up to 1.5. And then let's merge plus our spark into the plate. And now we want to make sure that the timing of our spark is correct. We want it to appear just when the two lightsabers hit each other. So let's get time offset and go to the sheet. And then let's offset our spark one frame backwards. And then let's add a reformat to make the spark the same size as our project here. And then we're gonna get transform. And then we want to move our spark here to the intersection of the lightsaber. And now let's add a little bit of glow. And then add hue shift and reduce the saturation a bit. And this is what we have. Before we go further, if you're enjoying this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will not miss out on more tutorials like this one. And now, let's continue. Next, we're gonna add the flashing flare that comes from the lightsaber hitting each other. To get that flash of light, I want to use this lens flare from our Action VFX Icon Lens Flare collection. So our flare is dim at the beginning here. So what I want to do is to get a time offset and we want to offset this by minus 50. That way we get rid of the beginning part where we don't have our lens flare. And then let's add reformat to scale this to the same format size as our project or our plate. And then we're gonna create a roto shape. And I want to create a circular mask because I want the flare to be more contained in the middle. And then let's create a merge and mask the lens flare based on the roto. And then we're going to add blur to blur out the roto a bit. And then let's add transform and scale it up. And then we want to merge plus our flare to the plate. So we want the flare to flash really bright when the saber first hit. And then we want the flare to track on the saber for the rest of the shot. So we want to do another motion tracking. So let's get another tracker node. And then we want to track the middle of this intersection of the lightsaber here. And once that's done, we only need the translate data and set the reference frame to the reference frame that we want. And then we're going to select match move and generate the match move node. And then we're going to plug in our transform match move into our lens flare node. And perfect. So next what we're going to do is to add a hue shift. And we're going to rotate the shift until we have a yellowish green color on our flare. And then we want to reduce the saturation just a little bit. And then we're going to add multiply 
And by using multiply, we're going to control the fade in as well as the brightness of our flare. So let's go to the one frame just before the two lightsaber touches and set the multiply to zero. And then add keyframe on the multiply and then move one frame, set it really bright, and then move two frames forward and dial it down to something like 1.5. Okay, so we have our lens flare. But currently, it's looking a bit too static. So what I want to do is to add a little bit of flicker on the flare. And we can do that manually, which is by just adding keyframe and then move one frame forward, reduce the value of the multiply a little bit, and then move one frame again, and then bring it up again. And we want to do this several times, basically creating a back and forth on the value to create some flicker. We could also add some flicker effects to the size of the flare, to add a little bit more life to it. So what I want to do is to get a transform node. And then basically here, when the flare is supposed to be covered by the hoodie, we want to animate it scaling down and then scaling it back up when it comes back into view. Okay, one last thing I did was I added this other spark hit footage to enhance the lightsaber clash a little bit more. And that was how to create a simple lightsaber effects in Nuke. Once again, special thanks to our friend Chris for lending us this amazing shot to use for this tutorial. He makes a bunch of really cool stuff on his YouTube channel, Fix It In Post, so check him out and give him some love. And of course, if you want to purchase the VFX stock footage that I used in this tutorial, you can check out our website at actionvfx.com. At Action VFX, we provide high quality VFX assets for your VFX needs. We have fire, explosions, energy, and many, many others. You can also sign up for our Action VFX subscription starting at the low cost of $14.99 a month. This is the most affordable way to access our library and you can cancel anytime, no contract. Thank you so much for watching. I encourage you to drop a like and let us know in the comment section below what you thought of this video or if you have other tutorial ideas that you would like us to cover. Most of all, be sure to subscribe, we are aiming for 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And also, there are a ton of other resources on our channel, such as tutorials, podcasts, VFX breakdowns, and so much more that we think you'll find valuable. This can be your home for visual effects content. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.